Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I am going to talk about Visual Studio Code in Python. So let's take a look at the agenda for this session. So first of all, I'm going to begin with what exactly is Visual Studio Code. After that, we will take a look at how we can install and set up Visual Studio Code on our systems. Moving further, we will run our first Python program. And finally, to sum up this session, I will give you a quick walkthrough for the whole code editor and tell you how you can use it to your best interest. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Also, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. And if you're looking for a certification program, the link is given in the description box below. So without any further ado, let's begin our session guys. Also tell us in the comment section guys, if you already have worked on Visual Studio Code or you have just started or what kind of problems are you facing with Visual Studio Code while using Python so that we can help you in the best possible way. So moving on, let's talk about what exactly is Visual Studio Code. So according to Wikipedia, Visual Studio Code is a free source code editor made by Microsoft for Windows, Linux and Mac OS. And the features include support for debugging, syntax highlighting, intelligent code completion, snippets, code refactoring and embedded Git support as well. So this is the basic definition of what exactly is a Visual Studio Code. And if we take a look at how Visual Studio Code can be used. So Visual Studio Code is a streamlined code editor with support for development operations like I have mentioned debugging, task running and version control. It aims to provide just the tools a developer needs for a quick code build, debug cycle and leaves more complex workflows to fuller featured IDEs such as Visual Studio IDE. Alright guys, so what we'll do now here is let's discuss a few features that Visual Studio Co Code comes with. And Visual Studio Code comes with built-in support for Node.js, JavaScript and TypeScript with a wide range of external support for other languages like Python, C++, etc. So we're going to use Python in our Visual Studio Code editor and it is basically going to be done by using an extension that I'll tell you. So let's just talk about a few features that the Python Visual Studio Code comes with. The first one is the IntelliSense, then we have linting, the code formatting, debugging support, testing support, Jupyter Notebooks, environments and refactoring. So let's talk about all of them one by one. So autocomplete and IntelliSense are provided for all Python packages stored at standard locations. You can right click on different identifiers to take advantage of the several commands. There is go to definition, peak definition, go to declaration, peak declaration that we'll see in the text editor later. And then we can run selection line in the terminal. It is used to take selected line to the Python terminal as well. For formatting, it makes the code readable and easier by implementing certain rules for indents, space, round operators, line spacing, etc. When it comes to refactoring, the Python extensions adds the following refactoring commands, which is extract variable, extract method, and sort imports. So extract variable extracts all similar occurrences of the selected text within the current scope. And for extract method, it extracts all similar occurrences of the selected expressions or block within the current scope. And for the sort imports, basically sort imports use the isort package to consolidate specific imports from the same module into a single import statement. And two others import statements in alphabetical order. So this is all about the features that Python Visual Studio comes with and we'll see about them, how we can work with these features later on in the session when I'll give you the walkthrough. So let's talk about the installation and setup guys. To download Visual Studio Code, you have to go to the official documentation page or the official website where you will find the suitable download version for Windows, for Linux and for Mac. Since we have done it from Windows and I have already installed Visual Studio Code, so I don't really need to download anything guys. So I'll just quickly tell you how the Visual Studio Code looks like. So this is the Visual Studio Code guys. To set up it on, on your system, what you have to do is go over there, the extensions, and there you select the Python extension and install it, guys. You can see what are the details over here. So they have told you how you can set up the environment, how you can run your first program as well. They have told about how you can configure tests by running the configure test command. And there is the configure the debugger using the debug activity bar as well. All right. So this is all the support that the Python extension comes with that I've already mentioned. There is a Jupyter Notebook quick start guide as well. So everything is already there. You just have to look guys. So I'll just quickly tell you how you can create a simple hello world program in Visual Studio Code. So I'll just close this extension bar. All right, so you have to create a workspace guys, which is nothing but a workspace folder guys. So after you create it, you have to create a file over there. 
with .py extension. So let's just create a new file. We'll call it as sample.py. So this is my sample.py and I will print hello world because since we have this rite of passage for every file that we have, right? So syntax error is there, invalid syntax showing. Let's see what, what we have done wrong. Right, let's run it again. All right, guys, so we are getting this syntax error probably because we have to select the interpreter and let's all right so we'll select an interpreter these are the interpreters available for us okay let's choose this one let's run it now okay we're still getting the syntax error okay let's run this now right so we are getting the output now here guys so we were getting that error because probably we did not really select the interpreter that was required over there and that is why we're getting the wrong output so now that we have established how we can use visual studio code for you know writing a simple python programming code so first of all what you have to do is choose an interpreter after installing the python extension which we had forgot that's why we're getting the error after that you create a workspace which is basically nothing but the folder that we have created over here this hello folder after creating the workspace, you create a file with the .py extension because you're making a Python file and then you run the code and you're good to go. That's how you run a program in Python, guys. All right, so I'll just write. So this has become a Jupyter Notebook and after this, I can just open the Python interactive shell. So this is how I can use the Python interactive shell also, guys. Now you can see I have written hello world over here and this is the word. And if I type any code here, I'm going to see the output over here. So let's say we write for i in range 0 to 5. And if you already don't know about the range functions or any data types that we have, you can follow our Python programming certification program or you can follow the full course video on our tutorial. And after this, we'll just print, let's say, Eureka. And you can see the output over here. So I'm just typing the code over here in the Python interactive shell. And I'm getting the output over here. So this is how you can, you know, start the Python interactive shell by writing hash percentile percentile and you're good to go guys. So this is how easy it is to work with Visual Studio Code. And that is why most of the developers are switching on to Visual Studio Code because it gets very easy while working on the Visual Studio Code for Python and we have the interaction. So there is debugging and linting support as well. So I'll quickly tell you about what exactly is linting and how it can help you guys. Linting basically highlights the syntactic and styling problems in the Python source code guys since we have this high level program It won't be much to discuss over here because it's only one line of code But to enable linters we can use the following approach even which although the Python extension comes enabled with the pylint linter as a default But what we can do is we can open the command palette, which is Control shift P and after that you see all these commands over here, which is Python select interpreter Python create new blank Jupyter notebook, Python select linter, Python run linting. So I'll select the linter first of all. Let's see what all options do I have. I have bandit, flag gate, mypy, prospector, pycode style, pydoc style, pylama, and pylint. So what you can do here is select any of these that you want as your linter. And even though the linting runs automatically, even you just save your file. This is just an example how you can, you know, just use any of these. So if you choose this, and then run linting all right so let's close this yeah so we go to the command palette we select the linter current is pylint all right now how do we run linting so let's run this we're getting the output all right so we're getting the output so how did how do we run the linting part over here all right so we open the command palette now again and we do the run linting part over here and that's how you run the linting guys all right guys so i'm going to discuss the debugging support now and uh, it's quite important the python visual studio code comes with a debugging support which works in our simple hello world program as well okay i'll just show you guys click over here you see this breakpoint click on it press f5 it'll open the right so now what we have to do here is uh, okay so this is our and we run this now we are running the current file. All right, guys, so this is how we can run our debugging for any file. And this is a very simple example just because we have used the print hello world over here. And we run the F5 key again to run the program. And to select the configuration also, it will open up the debug toolbar. What we have to do here is 
Control Shift P and we search for the debug. Alright guys, so I had already selected the Python file as the current configuration. So that's why I was able to uh, run the debugging support over here for the Python print statement over here. We, we have just printed the hello world program. So we have so far learned about how we can work with the Python interactive shell and how we can work with the debugging support and the linting support. And we have seen how we can work with the Jupyter Notebook. So now what I'm going to show here is how you can work, you know, practically because since we, this is just a hello world program. So I'm just going to show you. You know, after importing certain libraries into our program, and after that, how we can, you know, basically run our program. So, for that, what we'll do is let's say import pandas as pd, right? So, for this, we will have to select, right? One second, guys. I think this would run. Right, so now we'll make a data frame using pandas data frame. And now that we know we've installed Python pandas, let's try to import pandas as pd. So this is how we can import panda in our function over here. So now what we can do here is create a pandas data frame. Or instead of creating the data frame, we can read a CSV file, right? So I'll mention the file over here. All right, so we have an error here. So let's write R and this is good to go. So what we'll do here now, let's open the interactive cell guys. Right, so as you can see guys, we have imported the CSV file over here and we're using it using the pandas module. So the only thing that we have to worry about while working on any IDE for that matter, be it Visual Studio Code or PyCharm or any other IDE, we have to look for the Python interactive shell so that we can work with our Python scripts and we have to see or we have to know that we have an ease of access to the terminal so that we can run our commands over there, install all the packages using the pip install command because terminal is only one of the ways where we can install these packages using you know the pip install command and after that we have to take a look at the project configurations where we can just you know switch to different python interpreters or you know debug configurations that we have seen in the python visual studio code and we also have to make sure that the installation is pretty easy for the python packages there is no confusion at all and after that we have to make sure that python interactive shell works for us perfectly fine which we have done over here in the beginning we started with how we can download and install and the basic instruction with the features and after that we have seen how we can download and install other packages and use the python interactive shell to run the python scripts this is it for this session guys if you have any questions you can mention them in the comment section below and if you want us to cover some specific project that you're working on using visual studio code do let us know in the comment section guys so that we can help you thank you guys see you guys in the next session i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!